let's get started with our album base. So we are going to use the easy wrap method on this, and that is the method where you wrap each piece of chipboard separately. You leave in one inch border around the entire piece with the cardstock you're wrapping it with. Clearly, cardstock is 12 by 12. We cannot leave an inch on top and bottom with this. I think I have found a way around this. We're going to see how it works out here. Hopefully it works the way I hope it will work. <laughs> I guess we'll find out, won't we? So I've got three pieces of chipboard that are six inches by 12. For our spines, we need one piece that is one and a half by 12 and one piece that is one and a quarter by 12 to wrap these pieces. For the three main pieces, you need six pieces of cardstock that are eight by eight. For the spines, you need two that are eight by three and a half and two that are eight by three and a quarter. We're gonna start with our spines and then we'll wrap the rest. So I'm gonna grab my scoreboard and on my pieces to wrap my chipboard, I have one piece that I have used one inch score tape at the end. You could use two pieces of half inch if that's what you have. I just happen to have a roll of one inch that I've been hoarding for a while. <laughs> so if I use that, we're going to start with the piece that does not have the one inch strip. Okay. So we're going to put our cardstock in in here we're going to use our one inch templates like we normally do and i am going to pull back half of the backing on my score tape that's on the back of my chipboard we don't want the whole thing pulled off because we don't want to inadvertently stick it down somewhere it doesn't need to be stuck down okay I'm going to go about right there. I'm just going to bend that down, fold that down so it stays out of the way. And then we're going to line this up just like we always do. Okay. So now we can go ahead and pull the rest of that off. We're going to take our other piece. And we're going to make sure that this strip of, of tape that we've got, this one inch strip of tape, is going to be up here at the top and it's going to be covered by that template because we're going to pull the backing off of that after we get it lined up. So now, I'm sorry, not at the top, at the bottom. I promise I really didn't think this through before I started doing this. <laughs> okay, put your second piece in, one inch strip of tape at the bottom. You've pulled your backing off the rest of this piece. We're going to line it up. And really, the way this is lining up, we probably could get away with this piece being shorter, but that's okay. It'll be fine the way it is. So we're going to line that up and then slide it out. Okay. So I'm slightly off, something must have slid, so I'm slightly off side to side. But where this is going to get wrapped, it's not really going to matter. So now I'm just going to get under here. I'm going to pull that backing off of that piece of tape. And there we go. And we're going to go like always. We're going to bend. And we're going to burnish. I do have just a little bit of, not really cracking, yeah, kind of cracking, I'm not sure. On that piece, of course it could just be the linen popping through because that does happen with the artisan sometimes. Not a big deal. Okay. And we're going to go back the other direction. our ends and then 
find my scissors. Okay, then just like we always do, you're going to go ahead and trim across on that corner. Okay, and then where this is hanging over, just that little bit, we're going to just... Just barely trim that up just to even it out. Okay. Not a big deal. Alright. So this is trying to flap just a little bit more than I would like. So I think I am actually going to end up trimming that other piece down. But we'll deal with that in a minute. I'm just going to stick some glue under here. Okay, now we are going to take our quarter inch score tape that I've apparently lost over here as well. I have like this whole pile of rolls of score tape over here. It's crazy. And we're going to get that on the ends here. clean up where this is hanging over on the back side here. The way to avoid that would be to put the tape on prior to mitering those edges, but I literally forget to do that every single time without fail. You think I've made enough of these now I wouldn't forget. All right, so now we're going to pull our backing. going to take, like always, my bone folder, push that up and up, over, and then out. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. push it up against that chipboard and over and then burnish it down. Okay and then I'm just going to turn this over and I am just going to work that chip or cardstock down against the side of the chipboard. When you do that, watch when you're going this direction that you're not catching like I just did on that seam. Okay. And then we're just going to miter the tops of these. Just a little bit, just so that's not standing up where that fold is. Okay. I'm going to set that one aside. Let's do our big pieces now and since we have learned we don't need that extra inch on the bottom I'm going to take my three eight inch pieces that do have that the adhesive on the bottom and I'm going to cut an inch off of those so these are going to be eight by seven so we're going to make a slight adjustment to that so you're going to have two pieces that are eight or I'm sorry three pieces that are eight by eight three pieces that are eight by seven that will line up way better. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So again, we're going to take eight by eight piece. We're going to put it in here. We're going to make sure it is all the way over where it needs to be and that it has not moved on us. And then for these, for well, two of these, I had six by six score tape, 
just gonna make it a little bit easier. I had the six by six squares. So get that one down in there. Get up underneath this edge. Get our backing. Pull that off. And we're gonna take one of our seven by eight with the one inch of adhesive at the bottom. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Okay. And there we go. That one worked perfectly. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just not my day today, apparently. Okay, so we're gonna get in there and get that adhesive pulled off of there. And this one lined up side to side, everything, so yay us! <laughs> oh my gosh, seriously. Okay, so we're gonna bend. You're just using the chipboard to bend this over, burnish it down. Same thing on the opposite side. And then on our ends, same thing again. All right. So now we're going to cut out the corners on this piece because this piece is getting wrapped fully. It doesn't need to have its little wings. Okay. And then you want to bend and make sure that you don't have too much hanging over the edge. What I'm doing is putting my scissors against the edge of the chipboard, pivoting ever so slightly and getting that mitered. Okay. Same thing on this end. So in case you're not aware, I had done this same folio last year. It was maybe the third tutorial I was recording, maybe third, maybe fourth, I honestly don't remember for sure. And I got the album done. The problem was, as I was trying to do that, that particular album and record a tutorial and everything else, it was when my husband was building my craft room. <laughs> so literally I would get, you know, a few hours on a weeknight or you know, in an afternoon to work on it. And then by the time the weekend would roll around, I'd have to either tear part of my craft space that was in the one corner of, at the time, the unfinished basement, tear it apart and move it out of the way because some something needed to be done, you know, electrical lines needed run. Um, I had to completely disassemble the entire craft room and move it all and cover it up when they were doing the ducts for the um, HVAC, which I know I was working on that album at that point in time. And in doing so, literally, I mean, I would work on this for, you know, a day or so, or a few hours, and then I would have to stop, and it would be days and days before we get back to it. So, you know, I would record stuff, but it didn't always record I had I know at that point I was still recording with my phone on like a tripod thing you know I had the phone literally like run out of battery and cut off on me um you know I just had issue after issue with every every bit of footage that I tried to record for the tutorial for this one you know, on top of that, I had, in trying to figure out how to build the original base for this, I think I had, I think I had done it three separate times and had managed to screw it up two of the three. It might have been three times I screwed it up and the fourth one, it finally came out the way I wanted it. So, you know, I had all of those recorded and then I think the fourth one where it actually worked right didn't get recorded 
or only got partially recorded. But long story short, by the time I got to the point of, of finishing the album, number one, I was so tired of it. I would just as soon have thrown it in a fire as actually finished it. <laughs> number two, the paper that I used on it was that the Practically Perfect paper by Cartabella, which I absolutely adore. It is the prettiest. You know, it was it was really fun. But I had a very hard time making patterns work together. I don't know why. That's literally the only time I've had that happen. And quite honestly, by the time I had the album finished and I recorded the walkthrough and I went to try to, you know, start finding the footage for the tutorial, it was all such a mess. I went, I'm done. I'm, I'm tired of this. I am walking away. <laughs> I've had nothing but problems with this album. And my intention had always been to come back and, you know, do a tutorial for this. Because the album itself, like the overall layout of it, was really fun. And it was, you know, something kind of different because, you know, of the size. Because it is, it's so, you know, you don't see stuff typically going up to 12 inches. I mean, it's just not, you know, it's just not typical. Um, and as soon as the Dinosaur Paper by Cartabella came out this year, I was like, Oh, that is the paper I need to redo this with. And it's just been a matter of finding time. So today, instead of working on my actual design team package, which is the um, Echo Park uh, Magical Adventure paper, or Remember the Magic, I keep calling it Magical Adventure, and I know that's the old one. I just have this mental block. Um, I'm doing this one instead because this one's all planned and I literally just have to look at my notes and adjust a couple of things and move on. <laughs> okay, so cut out our corners, fixed our edges on our mitering and I have run one inch score tape around the edges and I'm gonna start on the short edges first. Doesn't really matter, you can start on the long edges first. I just prefer the short. I'm gonna run a little bit of glue down on the, down next to the chipboard and then through that middle and then just the same thing again, we're just going to use our bone folder to fold that up around. Do the same thing on the opposite end. In fact, I don't even have that album, the original album anymore. I had a friend that asked me if she could buy it from me and I was just like it's all yours take it I don't want it <laughs> I was so frustrated with it at that point and I mean she literally you know caught me like days after I'd posted the walkthrough of it and she's like hey um and I have that just barely I'm trying to lift up right there so we're gonna just put a little tiny bit of art glitter there and get that push down. Okay. And last side. Actually, I think that's what I did. I think I caught it with my bone folder. All right. And there's our first piece. And the seam in the middle will get covered when we mat this, so it's not going to matter. And there's our first piece. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap our other two pieces, big pieces that is, and then we'll redo that silly um, spine piece that I screwed up because yay! <laughs> oh my gosh, because that's just how today is going to go apparently. Okay, so another one of our 8x8 pieces, get it all the way in there our template in here and this piece was where I ran out of the six by six sheets unfortunately I need to order some more because they're awesome for stuff like this and I didn't want to use the eight and a half by eleven I could have would have worked didn't want to <laughs> In where it needs to be. Push this down. We're going to 
we come back in here, we're going to get our other piece off. Push that down. Side by side, or side to side, not side by side. Okay. up in here. So we would go ahead and wrap those just like we did the other one. All right. There's my one and a half inch spine, which is the one that got messed up. We have our two three and a half inch pieces. One is eight inches long. One is seven inches long. Seven inch long piece we are going to put the one inch score tape at the bottom. board was wrong because this is one and a half inch score tape. I think that's what happened. I think my chipboard was wrong. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I did. Oh, well, that explains it. I didn't measure wrong on the cardstock. <laughs> I did on the chipboard. Go much better. Okay, so I'll move those just so they're not getting caught. One more time, we're gonna take our three and a half inch by eight inch piece. <laughs> we're gonna put it in our thing. We are going to burnish our score tape down first, apparently. because it's not on there perfect. That's okay. All right. That looks much better. I should have noticed on the other piece that it was wonky and I didn't. But that's okay. Get our second piece in there. Tape at the bottom. And this one lines up, so yay! <laughs> my gosh, I'm telling you, there are days, it's usually like days like this, I just walk away, I can't do this today, <laughs> but my family. 
family is not home. I actually have some alone time and I'm going to use it. Okay, so we're gonna fold and burnish. Fold and burnish. because this is the spine piece, we are going to trim across on the corners as opposed to cutting out the square. And again, I just forgot to put the tape on there, didn't I? That's okay. We'll work around it. It's fine. If that's the smallest thing that I completely screw up today, then Clearly, that's not the only thing I've screwed up today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to go across here. We're going to go across here. Okay. I'm going to turn that back over. Trim those off and clean this off my scissors in a minute. My husband took my son to go fly remote control planes with one of the neighbors and their son that my son plays with all the time. So hopefully they're having a good time. All right. So then we're going to get our backing off. Try not to pull up your score tape when you do it because apparently this is what I'm going to do today. And then you're just going to run glue. Along that space between the tape and the chipboard. Push it up against the chipboard and over. And again on the other side. Make sure your score tape is actually burnished down because then it actually sticks. <laughs> oh my god! Seriously! Okay. burnishing because we do have that little line there where those join. Make sure you're going across it this way not towards it because you will catch on that and you will end up tearing your cardstock. Okay. So instead of going back and forth like I normally would we're just gonna go in one direction. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side only I'm going to pull it towards me so again I'm coming across that as opposed to going towards that seam. Okay. And then we will very slightly miter the tops. All right. Awesome. Okay, so this is our one and a half inch. So I'm actually going to write on here. So this is the one and a half inch. The one and a half inch spine goes on the left. This is the one and a quarter. This one goes on the right. You'll see why when we get to that part in just a minute here. But in the meantime, let's finish wrapping our chipboard. You're just going to use that chipboard to help you fold. 
And believe me, this is so much easier with this cover style. I cannot thank Tammy enough for coming up with this because it's so much easier. And I feel like you ended up honestly using less paper because, and this is the sad part because I'm an accountant in my day job. <laughs> um, I always had a really hard time like figuring out how long my, my cardstock to wrap these needed to be. I could do the height just fine. It was the width. I was always like either too long or too short and just, it wasn't fun. And this side, this way is so much easier. You don't spend as much time trying to fight with, you know, like in this case, when I did the original one, because I was using the old, you know, the, the, the normal wrap style that a lot of people use. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's some albums it just works better on. Like, I know I had um, my Christmas present one, my gatefold one. I remade it for somebody and I used the new method. And it actually threw my measurements off because you don't have that automatic uh, eighth inch gusset on either side and it threw off every single one of my measurements and I was so frustrated until it dawned on me that that was why I was like I know I'm cutting these right why do I have to keep coming in here and cutting off like I think I ended up having to cut off oh my gosh almost a quarter of an inch on every single element on every single page in that thing and I was just beside myself I was like what on earth is going on here that's why so if you are using an older tutorial and you're using this new wrap style, if it's just a normal book, you'll be fine. If it's something that's a little bit different as far as like closure wise, then it's going to be, it's going to be a little weird. But this method where you're wrapping all these pieces individually actually opens up a lot more as far as you know, sizes and, you know, just a lot more things that you can do with that method. My next official design team project as opposed to this one that's unofficial, which everything came from Country Craft Creations, of course, but um, this was not a design team package that I was sent. This was just paper that I loved and I'm doing a tutorial for. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, I, for my design team project, I'm actually playing around with this wrapping method and this construction method to do something a little bit different. And I think it's going to turn out really, really cool. I'm excited. I was messing around with my prototype for it um, yesterday and for a minute this morning. And I think it's actually going to work exactly like I thought it was going to work. So that's like super exciting for me. I love when I, you know, come up with something in my head and I can actually make it work the way I had it, the way I envisioned, because I don't know about you guys, but that's what ends up getting me stuck more often than not is I get in my head, okay, this is how this needs to work and look and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then when it doesn't, I get really frustrated <laughs> and I just like, I can't move past it and I end up wasting more time trying to make it work like I had in my head originally than if I would have just said, okay, you know, when it didn't work initially, said, okay, move on because I can tell you what I most recently did it with. So the Disney, Disney inspired album, it can't be officially a Disney album. It's a Disney inspired album that I did with the magical remember the magic paper that I called magical journey through the entire stinking tutorial and the walkthrough and I didn't realize it until it was too late um the front had that shaker on it with the balloons right I knew I wanted a shaker on there initially I was trying to recreate one of the there's a paper in that collection that has like all these little carts on it like a popcorn cart and a souvenir cart and all this, and they're just adorable. 
and if you've been to Disney at all, you know that the, the carts are everywhere, like, you know, just everywhere, you know, popcorn and churros and, you know, drinks and snacks. And, I mean, just everything. There's, there's carts literally everywhere, which I love. That is just, you know, one of those, one of those things. Did I, what is that piece? No, that's just an extra piece. Okay. Um, and I wanted to create a cart reminiscent of the one that's on the paper on the front of the album that had like a, you know, like between where the bottom of the cart and the awning would be. That was going to be my shaker window. I could not make it look right. I tried doing something in Cricut. I couldn't make it work. And I was so irritated because, you know, I was going to do it. And I had like this one little piece of chipboard that had the balloons on it. And I just, I couldn't get it to be sized right. I couldn't get it to look right. And I mean, I kid you not, I spent probably six hours trying to figure this out. I had every other piece of that book done. The tutorial was filmed. I literally just needed to finish the front of the stinking album. <laughs> And I got so hung up on how that was going to work that I wasted like an entire evening. Like I'd started, you know, after dinner, I sat down here until like two in the morning trying to figure out how to make that work. And finally was like, balloons, you covered it with cloud paper, use balloons floating in the sky like an idiot. And it came out so much better than my original idea. And then I just got mad at myself all over again. So now you've had a peek into the crazy that accompanies my design process. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, it's hereditary. My mom does the same thing. Like she'll, you know, she'll get in her head that she needs a certain piece of furniture or, you know, a certain pattern for, you know, pillows for the couch or something, and she'll make herself absolutely crazy f trying to find it. And yeah, I do the same thing. So must be hereditary. <laughs> We're going to go with that. We'll just blame my mom. <laughs> uh, in part because she doesn't ever watch these videos, so it's okay. Oh, no, I love my mother, but yeah, that, that part of crazy, that's her fault. <laughs> Oh, I think they're back. I hear them upstairs. Okay. But that's okay. We're about done getting this base piece built. And then we will put this whole cover piece to get cover together. And then we can move on to the inside. again. Glue. And over we go. And the other thing about this cover too, once you've done it a couple of times, you kind of get the hang of it. Honestly, I can put one of these together faster than I ever could the other style. Like if I'm, you know, following somebody else's tutorial or I'm you know, doing a, a mock-up, you know, test version of something that I'm going to do as a project, as a tutorial. Because sometimes I do that. If I'm doing something weird that I'm not sure how it's going to work out, you know, I will do prototypes. But um, I can slap together one of these bases in like 15 minutes if it's you know, a normal one that I'm not having to do anything too out of the ordinary on. So I'm just going to get that little bit of linen off the corner that I apparently didn't miter quite right. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have our three cover pieces. We have two hinge pieces. So we are going to start on our left side. I'm going to put one of these to the side because we don't need it just yet. 
we're going to turn this over and we're going to put quarter inch score tape on this outside edge and just inside where the chipboard is. You don't want it too close to the chipboard because you don't want any of that adhesive hanging out that's going to collect dirt and dust after your album's done and it's, you know, sitting on a shelf for everybody to see the amazing thing that you created. <laughs> okay. All right, so you're going to take our bone folder. You're going to burnish down the side of that one more time. In fact, I'm even going to fold it over one more time. Let's see, that's the one I caught. I will fix that after we get this actually assembled, so that's okay. All right, so we're going to pull our tape backing off. And then we're going to put glue just in the center between the score tape. So now I'm going to take my cover. I'm going to put it, line it up. I'm going onto the part where there's no adhesive and I'm lining it up top to bottom and then I'm just going to push it off the edge of that chipboard and lay it down because that's the other amazing thing about this is we don't need to leave a gap because of the way this bends okay so there's one piece I'm do the same thing again on this side I'm actually going to bend this again this is definitely the one where I caught the caught the edge of that cardstock burnishing it the wrong direction, which is not something that's usually an issue, but in this case, because we are piecing the cardstock before we wrap it, it is an issue. So live and learn, right? It's first time doing it this way with something this big. So good thing to know. Alright, so. Again, we're going to line it up top to bottom, just push it off the edge of that chipboard, and down it goes. Flip it over, we can burnish, all right, so there is, this will be the cover, we'll open, and then open. So we're going to take our next little piece spine piece, the smaller spine piece. This is our right side piece. We're going to do the same. We're going to prep it the same way. And the reason we are using the combination, same thing when we're wrapping, the reason we're using a combination of glue and score tape. The glue, of course, especially if it's the art glitter, I mean, it's going to hold, it's not going to let go. You're not going to have to worry about this coming apart later on as people go through it. Um, I sincerely wish I had had art glitter at the point that I did my farm album because that has been handled and handled and handled. And I have had to go back in and fix parts of it because it just did not hold up as well um, because of the glue that I was using at the time. And I used probably more score tape on that than I did in on, you know, pieces, parts of it than I did um, glue that, you know, in hindsight, because as I've considering, I think that was like the third one of these I'd made from scratch that I wasn't following somebody's tutorial. Yeah. It was kind of a kind of a big deal. Um, okay, so this one because you've got now you know this whole piece, you're just gonna kind of tent it up like this. You're gonna do the same thing again. 
and line it up top and bottom on the spine, push it off the edge of the chipboard. And lay it down and this one went a little bit wonky. That's okay. It'll be fine. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Glue down the middle. Yeah. Oh no, that comes in here. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, you're fine. Okay. And again, we're going to line it up on top, push it off the side, and then down. Oh no, don't do that. I'm <laughs> too far over. See, this is what happens when I get interrupted. <laughs> okay, and down. Okay, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna burnish all this fun stuff down. What? <laughs> Thanks. Jeez. <laughs> all right, so close this up like so, and there is. Our base. All right, so we need to cover and reinforce those two pieces. So for that, I just have two pieces that are six inch by 11 and seven eighths. I'm just cutting a tiny, tiny bit off the top of that. I am going to, see I'm using totally different tape on this one too, get the backing off. And this will just reinforce our spine. And we we'll line up and down we go. Okay. Look around, we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we will use our bone folder. Oh my god, I think my son turned on the alarm clock in his room down here again. He's got a playroom and he's got like a little iPod dock thing that's on it. That's like part of a clock radio. And it's going off again because he's hit the clock button and turned the radio on again. Or I'm sorry, the alarm again, so... We're almost done, and then I will stop this and go turn it off, but thankfully the door is shut, so it's not super loud. <laughs> okay. All right. And there you go. So. And this is where it gets tricky, because we've now covered up what size our spines are. So what I would suggest doing, oh, there's my three and a quarter. What I would suggest doing would be in here, just putting right, left. This will matter when we go to map this and we go to put our pages and do all of that, mostly when we go to put our pages because this side folds in on side of the other side so you do need to know which side is which all right so we've got that I'm just gonna burnish this down in here and get that crease good and worked so that our book opens and closes nicely and there we go all right so our base is finished I will be back with, um, yeah, you can see where I caught that, that uh, cardstock on that side, darn it. We will be back to work on our inside pages. Okay, so let's start with the inside flaps that go in the center section here because there's things that are going to be built 
on these flaps. So there are three flaps. All of them are 11 and 7 eighths high. The first one is 6 and 3 eighths, 6 and 7 eighths, and then 7 and 1 eighth. So to score these, start with the biggest one so with the sixth and seven and sixth and one eighth I'm sorry sixth and one eighth side at the top 11 and seven eighths down the side we are going to score this at half an inch and then at one and a quarter okay our flap that is 11 and seven eighths by six and seven eighths you're going to score this at half an inch and then at one inch. Okay. The third flap that is 11 and 7 eighths, 11 and 7 eighths by 6 and 3 eighths, we're going to score this one at half an inch. The small flap opens to the left. These two flaps actually are going to. This one doesn't go to the left, that one goes on the side. The sixth and seven eighth flap is going to open to the left. The seven and one eighth flap is going to open to the right, and this one is attached to this, so then it flips open one more time. Okay? So let's go ahead and pull this in because we do need these down before we do the center section in the back here. So what I'm going to do. And this is my 11 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths. It has the two score marks on the side there at half inch and at one inch. What I'm going to do is miter that top edge of just to the first score line, not to the second one, because this is going to get folded up, so you've got to guess it. And we are going to glue this down on this side. turn my book. I am going to bend that up ever so slightly and then I'm just going to center it on this side here. I don't want to be right up against where this folds up but oh, oops, my glue is not going to play nicely. You want to be maybe a 32nd of an inch away from that just so that there's a little bit of space there and then we are going to open this up and we're going to burnish this down and then we can fold our second score line back on top of itself So there is our first flap. And as you can see, it's got that half inch gusset right there. Okay. On our other side, we're going to take our flap that is 7 and 1 eighths by 11 and 7 eighths. You're going to miter just this top edge just to the first score line. Burnish this over, fold this over and burnish. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. That we did on the other side. It's not good where it's not going to be. 
same thing again you're just going to fold that up ever so slightly just so you know for sure where the point that it bends at is and we're going to push that down open it up burnish this down and then same thing again we're just going to use that fold it over Finish it down, and there you have your other flap. And I might have actually just done this backwards. I think the smaller one was on the outside, or the single one was on the outside. It's okay. We can change it up a little bit. Like I said, this is the redo of a project that I did last year that I did not have enough usable footage to actually edit and post a tutorial on. Okay, so now we're going to take our last one. We're going to miter those top corners again. Fold and burnish. And this one is going to attach to that first flap the bigger flap. The flap with the bigger gusset. Not the bigger flap, the flap with the bigger gusset. I know what I'm trying to say. It is just not coming out right today. <laughs> okay. So, you're going to put that out to the very edge of that flap. is, as I'm hitting my little thing over there, and there's that flap. All right, so, actually, I think the way we're matting this, that's actually going to work better, so that's good. All right, so let's work on, let's keep this in the order. I've got everything stacked up, actually. Oops. Okay. So the first section we're going to work on is going to be the front inside cover, left in front inside cover. So that piece has two pockets. As you can see, I have my matting cut ready to go. So the pockets are going to be 10 inches by 7 and 1, or I'm sorry, 10 inches by 7 and 1 eighth. You're going to cut two of these. The flap for the top is going to be 5 and 7 eighths by 5 inches. Okay. So let's start with the easy one. For the top piece, the closure on the pockets with the five inch side. Somehow I don't think all of this is showing up. With the five inch side at the top, you're going to score this at half an inch. You're going to do that on both of those pieces. Okay. Go ahead and. Miter that. Okay. And set those aside. So now our pocket. We're going to start with the 7 and 1 8 inch side at the top of the scoreboard. <clears throat> We're going to score this at half an inch. And then at 5 8 of an inch. Turn it all the way around and then half an inch and five eighths of an inch again. We're then going to turn it so that the 10 inch side is at the top. You're going to score this at five and seven eighths inches and six inches. Okay. All right. We're going to do the same thing on the other one. Seven and one eighth on the top. Score it half an inch. 5 eighths of an inch. Turn it all the way around. Half an inch. 5 eighths of an inch. Turn it so the 10 inch side is at the top. 5 and 7 eighths. And 6. Okay. So now, let me double check 
both sets of notes, the new ones and the old ones, <laughs> just to make sure. All right, so you're going to turn this so that your shorter side is facing you. This is going to be the front of the pocket. What we're going to do is you're going to come in here on that inside score line. So you've got two score lines, half an inch and five eighths inch. On that five eighths inch score line, you're just going to cut. And you're going to cut it up to the second score line. So the five and seven eighths score line on the top. Okay. So you've got your two score lines here. You're going to cut it to the second one. And then you're going to come in on that second one across so that you're cutting out this little piece. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, you're cutting on that score line. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. We're going to do that on both of these. Whoops. If I can keep hold of it, that would be incredibly helpful. Okay. And again on the other side. So now, to assemble the pocket, you need to bend both score lines down here at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to burnish. Get your second score line set up there. And I realize when they're an eighth of an inch like that, it is a little bit tricky. But it can be done, I promise. Okay. And then, I may have to reference my pictures on how I did this. We're going to fold these in. You're gonna get your second score line folded in as well because this is going to give you this a little bit of a gusset on this pocket which is kind of helpful without it being too big where it's going to get smashed okay the same thing on the opposite side Now, we're going to glue this shut, but before we do that, you want to make sure everything winds up, closes up the way it's supposed to, you don't have anything weird sticking out, and then what you're going to do is you're going to, with it folded, don't glue it yet, hold it and mark where that front piece of the envelope touches okay okay and you're going to come back out here you're going to cut just a tiny bit just a hair below that and then down that inside score line again and you're going to do that on both sides to get that extra piece out that you don't need And on this, because you can see it more, you need to be very, very exact. Sorry for the background noise. It's absolutely gorgeous today. I've got my window open, and I'm pretty sure that's my husband coming back from his ride.
Okay, there we go. All right. So now we can glue this together. Before I do that, however, because my notes on here are really close to where we're going to be trying to mat, I am just going to go ahead and erase those. Now, we can, before we glue, glue this down, we can mat it. And then, of course, our top flap is going to go on here. So I am going to fold and burnish that. I'm not going to attach it yet because I found in my stash <laughs> the absolute cutest um, border punch that just and that's going to be upside down so that's not going to work on that but I'm going to use it I think on my pockets instead of angling them what I could do here in fact let me find a scrap and let's try this let me find a scrap that's close to the right size Got some random score lines in it, but that's okay. And this punch, I honestly have never used it until today. And it sticks, but that's okay. This is an old EK Success one that I've had. Honestly, probably since right after I started scrapbooking. And I bought it just because it was so stinking cute, and I've literally never used it until today. Which is probably why it's like kind of wonky and doesn't want to work right. Because it's been moved by the Air Force. God only knows how many times. Okay. So, I'm wondering if when we mat the front of this. No, not the front of this. The front of this one. Okay, so this one is getting the blue. The top of the pocket is getting the dots that have all the dinosaur facts on it. And that would be ridiculously cute on there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. But I can come back and do that after the fact. I don't need to bore you with all the banging of the silly punch on the table. <laughs> um, but I can do that when we come in after the fact. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and glue the front of our, or mat the front of that pocket, which that is going to get this little blue kind of prehistoric looking pattern. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. not a directional one it doesn't matter which way I have this turned okay and then we're gonna mat the top inside of this with this little dinosaur print and so far as far as the matting that I do have cut ready to go I have used And this, I, I do this with every collection I get. I get the collection, and then I always buy an extra sheet each of every single one of the cut aparts. And if there's any other pattern or something that I think I'm really going to use a lot of because it's kind of a good neutral that goes with everything or whatever, I will buy an extra sheet, sometimes two sheets of those, just depending on what it is that I plan on making. Okay. All right. Except I just forgot my magnet on that. Oh, no, no, no. Come off. Please come off. 
it's not gonna come off. Okay, we're gonna have to improvise with the magnet and that's okay because I literally do that all the time. All right, so here's our flap that goes on the top. We are gonna glue it to the back of the pocket and it's actually supposed to have another gusset in it. So that's probably a good thing I didn't glue it yet. All right. So half inch and then five eighths on this, on both of those, I apologize. But we caught it before any harm was done, so that's okay. All right. All right, so I am just gonna set this on here Get it lined up. Get my glue on the back. And just fold it over. Okay. So now I'm gonna put my magnet in here. Because <laughs> I knew I was missing something. do is, and I don't think I cut a map for this inside either, so that's okay. What we'll do is I'll just put either a cut apart or one of the stickers or ephemera pieces or something over that to cover that up. Okay, so the front of this is getting, like I said, this cute little dot paper that I do need to trim just a tiny bit off of. Not a big deal. All right, so that's going to go on here. And I know on the Practically Perfect album, we had um, one of the cut aparts matted on this to hold it closed. And quite honestly, I think it was because I'd forgotten magnets again. I don't think it was intentionally supposed to be like that. I really don't remember why I ended up doing it that way. Okay, so still need a mat in here. I will figure that out here in a little bit. I'll go through my scraps and see what I've got. Hopefully I've got some more of this one that I can just do that up there because that would be kind of cute. Or something like that maybe. We'll see, I'll figure it out. Okay, so we can set that one aside for right now. Let's work on our second pocket. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the folding and the burnishing to get that little eighth inch gusset. Not a big deal. Okay, so now this time, before we get any further, I am going to put the magnet on there. Because otherwise I literally just talked about it and I'll forget again because that's what I do. <laughs> Sometimes it ends up being okay that I end up, you know, inadvertently, inadvertently doing something cool when I do that, but not always. <laughs> okay. 
and mount that. And then we're going to come up here. We're going to fold these in. Fold this up. Get it lined up exactly the way it's going to go on the book. We're going to mark. And mark. And then we're going to trim again, just like we did before. check. Everything's good so we can glue this down. in here. All right. And then we'll get our it to the back. Line it up. Push it up there, fold it over. All right. So now we can go ahead and map the front and then we can put them in the book. reason I'm actually matting this as I go is because when we get on the one inside page on the original book I had done an element that I loved how it came out it was just really fun and um, I wanted to show you how I did it because that was it was part, part of the reason you know that I had been so excited about actually doing the tutorial on this and I've always felt bad that I had not gotten around to finishing the, doing, I didn't have enough footage of the, the actual tutorial to edit and post it. Okay, so you're gonna see, you're gonna have a little strip right there. All I did is I just attach my first one or figure out about where my first one's gonna go. I'm just gonna take a scrap and glue down underneath there just so that there is like that tiny tiny bit that you know you barely see is covered up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our bottom one going to come out to this outside edge and to the bottom and down it goes and 
get in here with my phone holder just to get that good and pushed down. I'm going to take my little strip here. Turn this so I can see the top part of my pocket there. Just line it up, get it down, and then we'll put our other pocket down. And this one's going to go up on top here. You're just barely going to see that little tiny bit of that strip under there. Again, all the way to the outside edge, all the way to the top, and down it goes. All right, there we go. So let's work on this opposite side here. So that side has couple of flaps and some matting. So let's work on our flaps first. I think this one actually also has a pocket in the original walkthrough. Um, I didn't cut that. We could go ahead and add it later if we decide to, but I think I might just actually put some photo mats on there instead. Okay, so this one, flaps, two pieces, five and seven eighths by six and three eighths with the six and three eighths side at the top of the scoreboard. And you're gonna score this at half an inch. We are gonna go ahead and miter. If you'll bear with me for one second, I just need to figure out where my child is because he hasn't complained at me in like two hours <laughs> like he typically does. Well, it's showing him at the neighbor kids still. Okay, that is all I needed to know. <laughs> bring this back in. You've got two flaps. One bottom, one top. And then we will end up matting um, some sort of little one of the cut aparts as a closure right here. And this does actually need a magnet as well. All right, but let's get these down first. Let me move our matting really quickly. Okay. And again, you're going all the way to the outside edge, all the way to the bottom. And down it goes. Same thing on the opposite side. Okay, do you have a gap? That's fine because then at least somebody else who's maybe not as familiar with the albums is going to know there's something under here that they need to look at. So we are going to go ahead and I am going to do magnet on one side only because I'm not sure what we're going to ultimately mat and put on that side for the other half of the closure. But this way, this much of it is here. It's under the matting where it needs to be as opposed to how this usually ends up working out for me. And then we can go ahead and mat our flaps. 
and these do need just a tiny bit trimmed off of those so that's fine you can open this up we can go ahead and mat our inside just a tiny bit trimmed up. We're going to go there and see how that fits. It needs just a hair at the bottom. All right. So this ended up being matted at The mat ended up being as five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay. Take that whole piece off of there. Two of them that were right, two of them weren't, which is typical, <laughs> which is why I don't usually mat on camera. Okay, so I think we're going to put this one down here. All right, so that piece is done. Now that everything is closing up the way we want it to, okay, still need to do the pockets that go on this side. I probably should have done that before we put these pieces inside, but that's okay. Because we're gonna fold this out flat and it's not gonna matter. <laughs> Okay, so here's our pockets. This is the piece we need to go ahead and do our pockets on. So, the pockets measure, they are all six and seven eighths wide. The front one is six inches, eight inches, 10 inches. Okay. So 
with the six and seven eighths side at the top. We're going to score this at half an inch, rotate, half an inch, and rotate. So the six and eight, seven eighths side is going to have two half inch score marks, one on each side, and then another half inch score mark at the bottom. Okay, again, we're going to start with six and seven eighths side, half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn, half an inch. One last time, half an inch, turn, half an inch, half an inch. I'm going to check where my sun is and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to work on the pockets that go on the front of this. As, as you open the folio, this is the front of the second side. Um, for these, on the original book, the pockets were angled. They were very hard to mat. They were very hard to get lined up and put down. So I'm not doing that here. Um, I can, I, I have the measurements of how I did those. And all it was, was just a matter of, let me look at my notes really quickly. You know, measuring up so far on one side and marking and then just cutting across to the top of the other side. The finished product looked cute. It was very, very time consuming, not necessarily difficult, just very time consuming to get them right and, and, and mat them and everything else. And quite honestly, I don't want to do that today. <laughs> so, and since I have made my adorable little border strips, look how cute these came out. Oh my God, I'm dying. And I'm so sorry because this punch is ancient. Maybe eBay. I don't know. It's, I've had it for, I mean, like long enough. I think I bought it at archivers. So how long have they been gone? Yeah. Um, hopefully, I don't know, maybe I can find something in design space and create something similar. I'll look and see if I can possibly do that because that would be awesome too. Um, okay. So what we're going to do, got my matting figured out here. We are going to miter the bottom corner of our pocket. all four of these. Okay. Pushing my recycle bin like way too far underneath there. Okay, so before we put down the first pocket, I am actually going to put my matting down, maybe, <laughs> maybe not, we'll see. You'll notice there's a little bit bigger gap on this side. It's because it's matted to the same width as the pockets matting is. So that's why it's it looks like that. So let me figure out. Literally, it took like 10 minutes to clean this up and I still can't find it. Um, Go ahead and fold and burnish. Oh my gosh, it's almost five o'clock. I don't know what we're eating for dinner tonight. Part of me really doesn't care either, so <laughs> there's that. All right, so I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm going to put glue on my bottom flap. Line this up again, 
to the bottom instead of going to one side or the other we're going to keep it centered okay so get that piece down and then we can fold back and then glue our sides and I realize this is an insanely deep pocket however what we can do is make like a long tag or two or some inserts or whatever um, where this has got a little bit of space to it you could probably even do like a narrow folia or uh, booklet that you could put in there and that would be cute okay so before we do that now that I've lost my matting we're gonna go ahead and mat the top of this one before we put the next pocket down and I mean if you want to mat all the way down inside your pockets you can honestly I don't see the point you know it, it just it uses a ton of paper to do that and it's not really necessary especially you know if they're just normal pockets like if they sp expand out then yeah maybe but these don't so all right so again we're going to start at the bottom get our adhesive on the bottom and usually a lot of times I will do pockets with um, tape instead of glue just because it makes it easier to get them to stick down but we're not going to do that because I'm waiting on more 3 8 inch score tape <laughs> I haven't used nearly as much of it here lately so I didn't realize I was as low as I was okay so we're going to do the sides down as well okay and again we're gonna mat and this is literally just the same paper that I've just flipped over cut it down to the size I needed to mat with and then just reversed it It's always a good way to take especially with something like this where you know we're essentially using the entire length of the piece to use it without having to cut a whole bunch of different ones I mean if you wanted to you totally could but this is actually a trick I use a lot of times when matting pockets especially um, you know or flaps even if I've got you know something that it a flap where I can very easily cut you know several pieces that are all the same and then I can just flip it over and use the opposite side I do that actually quite a bit because it makes matting easier <laughs> you don't have to think about it quite as much okay so again we're starting at the bottom getting this all the way to the bottom pushing that one down and then we'll do the sides. And there we go. Okay. And we'll mat that right there on the front. going to go just on here just like so in fact I don't know that I'll even put them on those pockets I might just put them on these two that have the green because they'd be really cute that way so let me get those stuck down really quick and I'll show you on the other side how they came out on 
the pockets on the other side because they came out really cute on there. Uh, and, I, you know, I could do this with, like, you know, inserts, or I could have done the tops of the pockets. I was really just concerned because it is kind of a delicate punch when, you know, this top piece and the side pieces are gone that it wouldn't hold up that well. So these guys I'm going to turn so they're going the opposite direction. ones we can use somewhere else even better okay so this is going to be our front cover and I planned on using this sheet I'm just not entirely sure which half I want to use right there because whichever half I don't use I'll either use the front or this back side because this back side is really cute um, on the inside so I think I'm going to hold off on that for right now. We're going to turn this back over. See how my border strips worked on there? They're so cute. Oh, I love it. Okay. So we've got that here. Which really, I could use these here. Down at the bottom would be kind of cute, maybe. We'll see. All right. So we are going to go to the center inside piece. So on the original, I had a small waterfall running this way. I had a four by six running this way. That was in part because the cut aparts for that collection had landscape four by six cut aparts. This collection does not. All of the cut aparts are portrait. So I didn't really want to do portrait four by six um, waterfall going to the side there. So what I'm doing instead is we're doing two small four by three waterfalls and we're going to do them on top of pockets and this is what we're going to mat underneath it. Although I don't know that we need that entire sheet. I don't think we do. So we're going to conserve some paper here. So then I can probably do that on the inside of these. So I'm going to set that one to the side. We're going to go ahead and get our pockets scored. So our pockets are, you're going to cut two, if I can get a hold of them. They are six and seven eighths by four and five eighths. You're going to cut two of these. Six and seven eighths at the top of the scoreboard. You're going to score half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn, half an inch. waterfall you need 12 pieces because we're going to have six and six of four and one eighth by three and five eighths with three and five eighths at the top you're going to score at half an inch on all of these Oh. 
All right, so we are going to fold and burnish. first set. And we have a close right in the score. We'll get to it. So we've got a couple of options here. There is one sheet of cut aparts, a three by four cut aparts that has just all these little dinosaur cards and they're cute and on the back side it's got this really pretty kind of jungle print so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through there find the six that we like the best and then we'll alternate between the green dinosaur card and the back side with all those pretty florals on it Okay, so first one, Damn. and you know, if you've done any of my tutorials with waterfalls, I like doing them on pockets for a couple of reasons. It kind of stabilizes them because if you just put it on a page, a lot of times what can happen is it will, the weight of the waterfall will pull the page kind of wonky, like out of, out of shape. And I don't like that. And two, when you're building the waterfall on top of something like this, it makes it very, very easy to get it even and get it straight. Because the height of the pocket is the same height as the waterfall itself. Literally, it makes it a lot easier, a lot more foolproof, and just making sure I got this lined up right. Just all around less frustrating. I know when I don't do them this way, when I just do them on the page itself, I manage to get them a little bit crooked. I mean, sometimes even this way they still end up crooked. And it's not so much the way I'm building them, it's the way I trim the paper. Um, a lot of days I am very cutting challenged. You have absolutely no idea. Okay. So, here's our first pocket. And grab the scoreboard really quickly. We have two closure pieces that we are going to put magnets on. These are one and a half by five and a half. The one and a half, I'm sorry, five and a half at the top, you're just going to score it a half an inch. Okay. Hold and burnish. We're just going to center it up, and I'm actually going to run it underneath the edge of that pocket just to make it hold a little bit better. So I'm just going to eyeball it, get 
it as close to center as I can and down it goes. Okay, we're going to put this one on the bottom and we just want to make sure that it fits in between here without touching, not necessarily not touching, but not, make sure it's not too wide. Yeah, we're good. Okay. I'm literally breaking my first roll of pockets right there and doing all the adhesive at once, but it'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So to the bottom. And down it goes. Okay. We're going to grab magnets. Get them in here before I forget. I'm going to have to grab out another set because this one's almost gone. ready to go. All right, so let's do our second one. And again, we're going to fold and burnish. And then get our waterfall pages and do the same thing. Our first one, our waterfall opens this way. This one, we're going to have it open the opposite direction. So one's going this way, one's going the other way. flap on here. And I think I only matted, got matting on one side of the flap too because I wasn't thinking about it. But 
that's okay because I have lots of little scrap pieces that I can map this with. seven and three quarters inches of space and this is about four and a quarter so I'm about two inches apart I think is probably about good enough Cards. Okay, so we want him. I want a pterodactyl. I want a triceratops. I want a stegosaurus. I want a tyrannosaurus, obviously. A brontosaurus. Because the rest of these, even though I've heard of some of them, like the ankylosaur, um, I want that. Uh, okay, so. Let's figure out who we're going to put on top. I think we're going to put that guy on top. If you wanted to, you could just mat like this little half inch that peeks out. I've done, I do that every once in a while, especially if I'm running low on paper, because <laughs> it's just a good way to you know, save some paper. Waterfalls do take up a lot of paper, especially if you mat every little piece of them, which I really do like to do, but and for whatever reason on this cut apart, I did not buy an extra one of this cut apart. I probably didn't realize how cute that was on the back of it or I would have bought an extra one, but that's okay. something for this back part here, but I will find that here in a little bit. 
I'm going to go back and get some of my other areas matted. All right. So there you go. I'm going to wait and mat this later on off camera. Why did that not stick? That's weird. The other side did, just the one side. Strange. Okay. Let's stick those in here for now. And we're going to move on to this page over here. So this page just has a couple of pockets. The pockets are going to be six and three quarters by three and one quarter. With the six and three quarter side at the top, we're going to score it half an inch. burnish. paper has this sheet with these four larger border strips on it that are just adorable. So these pockets are sized so that that border strip mounts perfectly on top of them. So I am going to go ahead and mat these before I put them down. going to do so we're going to mat up here all the way to the top okay and then we're going to do our pocket figure out where it's going to go. We're not actually going to put it down just yet. We're going to get our other mat down. So this is going to go about right there. Get our 
other side. And then we'll do our bottom one. So this way it's matted nicely, but we didn't have to use the entire sheet because I'd cut the two strips off of it for this other side. And because you're not going to look down inside the pocket, that works out quite nicely. A stick <laughs> or I'm not getting enough glue who knows one or the other okay so next we're gonna work on this side so this one on the original book the page that had the two little belly bands which again I've got these size so that I can use another one of those border strips. Actually, this one goes this way. Um, it was actually on the inside here. This time we're going to put it on the outside. And I think I may end up making just some sort of little tuck spot out of one of the ephemera pieces or the stickers or something that's going to go down here on the bottom. And then we'll make some um, uh, what I'm looking for here. Some big tags that are going to go inside here. So I am keeping that piece fairly intact. We're just going to put it down exactly like this. two belly bands that are going to go on this are, I don't want that, I want my scoreboard, <laughs> that would not be good, um, two and three quarters by six and three quarters, again these are sized for those border strips, so six and three quarters at the top, you're going to score half an inch, turn it all the way around, and then half again, so half an inch on the opposite side. go ahead and mat these before we put them down. Turn 
this sideways. It's going to totally fall off of there if I don't move it. I'm going to turn this sideways. I am going to take my ruler and I am going to center this up on here as best I can. right there. And once we get one side glued down, then the rest of it's easy. Okay. Go on our other tab, run it across. We're going to take this one. Line it up next, just as a continuation of the first one, and run it across as well. Okay, easy, easy. So what I might do is take one of my other border strips. I've got two left, and just make a tuck spot along the bottom here but I'm not entirely sure yet, so we'll figure that out. Another way you could do this would be to do tuck spots top and bottom and leave the belly bands off, and that would actually be really cute too. All right, so let's move on to this inside page. So what I have is this page here that is just very, very different, very cute. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim this page down so that half goes on each side. What we're then going to do is take this piece and we're going to make some flaps, some semi-hidden flaps that are going to be where a couple of these different panels are. Okay, so let's get this measured out and figure out where it's going to where it's going to be split and how wide we need it first hold on just one second Okay, so from our score line here to the other side, whoops, let's get the ruler turned right, is 11 and 3 quarters. So what we're going to do is, okay, so this is of course 12 by 12, 11 and 3 quarters. The border around the outside edge of this is a quarter of an inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an eighth of an inch off each side. That's the first thing. Now we are the right width. Okay, so now we want to see. So one half of this page is going to be five and seven eighths, five and seven eighths. So really. We need this to be five and three quarters each half. So to do that, we need to take off another eighth of an inch on each side. Okay. Just cut this down. 
down to. And then we know it's going to be, the height is going to be the same way all the way across. So our height is going to be 11 and 3 quarters. So then we're going to turn it and we're going to take an eighth off of the top and an eighth off of the bottom. Now we can cut this down to the five and three quarters that it needs to be for the two halves of the page. Okay. So these two pages, or these two pieces, are going to go on here. But before we do that, let's make sure they fit the way we want them to fit. Nothing else needs trimmed. We're all good there. Before we do that, we want to take the other piece, we want to figure out where we want our flaps. So I think right here, this panel needs to be a flap. I think most of this panel needs to be a flap. I think this one needs to be one, and this one needs to be one. So we are going to trim our other piece down. Like we had trimmed the first piece. Okay, so we're going to cut the branding strip off the bottom. Because we know this needs to go down to 11 and a half, we're going to start by taking a quarter inch off the sides. And then we're going to take an eighth of an inch off of the top and bottom. No, oh, God, not that much. <laughs> okay. So an eighth there. And an eighth here. All right. So, and I realize this is going to seem kind of counterintuitive, but just so that when we decide where our flaps are going to be, our hidden flaps are going to be. We want to start with the pages the same size they're going to be in the actual book underneath where the flaps go. So I'm going to cut this down to five and three quarters. Now, I want this piece as a panel. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut right on that black line. Stop at the top there, flip it over. I don't know what I turned the. 
from our floor, but oh well, there we go. And then I'm going to cut that piece up. Okay? Okay? So then I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom there, and then we're going to measure what we've got left. And I might actually trim just a tiny bit more off of that, just so I've got that black border completely gone. Okay. So, now we're going to measure this. So this is 4 and, I don't know, probably 7 sixteenths. So not a normal size by about five and fifteen sixteenths. So we are going to cut a mat that is four and if we go four and a half, it's not gonna be quite big enough. Four and five eighths is gonna be too big. Okay, so it's not quite, so let's put this in here, we're going to look, so it is, like I said, 4 and 7 sixteenths, so we're going to go 4 and 9 sixteenths, again, I realize this is a weird size, I apologize, but this will be so cool when you're finished, you have no idea. So this one is 5 and 15 sixteenths, so we're going to go 6 and 1 sixteenth. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to go 6 and 9 sixteenths because we need to score. Okay. So these two go together. Now for our top half, how do we want to do this? I think we're going to take it almost to the edge of this little thing, this little um, text box on this side. Take it to the edge of the text box on the other side. Save that. You can use that strip somewhere. And then we are going to go to the bottom of the text box. So again, we're going to measure and see what we're left with. So this one is 3 and 5 eighths by 5 and something. So we're going to just trim off a tiny bit right there. All right, so 3 and 5 eighths by 5. So on this one, I think we're going to have this one open out this way. So we're going to go 5 and 1 eighth. And it was, what did I say, 3 and 5 eighths? So 4 and 1 eighth. And there we go. So we will score that one in a minute. Now on our other side. How do we want to do this? Do we want to do two small ones and one big one? We could do four small flaps. We could do one big one here. We could do another one here. Let's start with the easy one up top. We're going to cut just inside the black. And then we're going to go just inside the black box on this side, or the black line, I'm sorry, on this side. And then we're going to take off just the, the little bit at the top here. I think we're going to go just right to the top of his head. Okay. And then we're going to measure again. So this time we are four and one eighth by five and a quarter. 
So this one, I think we're going to do up. So I'm going to go four and a quarter. And then, so five and a quarter, an eighth of an inch border. Then half an inch puts it to five and seven eighths. And there we go. Okay. Now for our bottom one. How do we want to do this? Because this is how wide it is. Do we want to do just one flap? Do we want to? Do one big flap. I think we want to do one big flap. So I'm going to start on this side. So I'm going to come right over here to the edge. And then I'm going to come on this other side. And we're going to come in uh, half an inch. Take that off. And then on the bottom, we're going to come right to the bottom of that little text box there. All right, let's see what we got. We got just under five by five and seven eighths. So I'm just first just to make that easier. All right, so at this point, this one's going up, this one's going to the side. This one, I think we'll actually have that one go down. So this one, we're gonna have it go to this side. So we need to have it be four and seven eighths. So five and a half. measurements to give you on this necessarily because you may not want to do this at all you may want to do it completely different you may not want the same little flap pieces as I do so hey that one hold on. and that one's going out to the side so, half an inch there. Okay. This one's going to go to the bottom. So, half an inch there. And this one is going to go to the top. Oh, I just turned that around. It literally doesn't matter. Okay. So, and this is where it gets tricky. First thing we're going to do is we are going to Okay. 
So now, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So what we need to do, apparently I measured this one incorrectly because it doesn't fit, so we will redo that one. All right. So you kind of have to eyeball it. And this one we need to trim down just a little bit because this is going to go too far off the side. So we're going to cut just a little bit off the side here. much better. And I think we're going to cut just a little bit more off this bottom end as well. So we need to take I am so losing my mind here. I'm not even kidding. There we go. Okay. So, this is our piece that goes down. goes okay and then we're going to tr trim either with the paper trimmer or with a craft knife whichever you are more comfortable with slit that you're going to feed your tab into. You didn't get it quite wide enough. That's okay. It's easy enough to fix. That's where I'm going to grab these. easier to get the rest of the way in there.
All right. And then this is going to sit right on top of this, just like it's supposed to be. Okay. So what I'm going to do is glue this one in place. over here is a guide so that it looks like and then when you open it up there you go it, it just is such a fun effect I love how this comes out all right so oh, that's right I gotta recut that mat on the other one so I'm gonna set that one aside we'll grab the other one all right so this one's gonna be coming in from the side One, I'm actually going to trim this little middle piece off here. I don't know how I missed that, but I don't want that on there. Okay. So then it needs to be going to do the same thing again. You're going to line this up on here. And if you want to go ahead and glue this down to this mat before you do this, that's fine. That might make it a little bit easier to line up, honestly. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to mark where that needs to go. that in. that you can see off of there to line that up and get that down. This one's slightly off, but that's okay. Not a big deal. All right, so let's do our last one. So this one is going to come in. We really almost have this one over too far, I think. We're going to trim this one down just a tiny bit more. So, take a little bit more off the top here. Take about an eighth of an inch off the top. So, 
we'll take an eighth of an inch off of this. And then we're going to take about the same off of this side. <coughs> Excuse me. up again. Okay. Now we're going to get our other piece in. Maybe, because it didn't go far enough over, I don't think. No, I did not. If you go a little bit too much, it's okay. You're not really going to see it once you get this glued down not going to be noticeable better than I did it crooked but that's okay because we can fix it shift on me, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, so I've got a little piece there that we're going to have to deal with when we glue this down onto the page, but that's okay. Like I said, this is not something I do very often just because it is time consuming and it really just to me it's got to be just the right paper to do it otherwise it's just you know I wouldn't do this on you know just some basic pattern it's because this one in particular is so cool I love this paper so I don't know if you've heard of Dinosaur National Monument. I grew up in Vernal, Utah, which is right by Dinosaur National Monument. So I was always around the dinosaur stuff as a kid, 
and was just always absolutely fascinated with it. So when I saw this collection, it was just kind of a given. I was like, yeah, I have to have this. <laughs> Okay, so let's get this one recut or just trimmed down. I'm just going to trim it. Alright, let's do that. There we go. That works. So... going to happen because this one is like right at the top. And that's fine because once it's actually down on the page, you're never going to notice. Okay. Alright, so there you go. So that's going to be our two pages. Um, my original one, I actually had magnets under here. And I'm trying to decide if we really need them or not. Because instead of this one being on the outside where you're folding it out this way, it's going to be on the inside where you're folding it in on each other. On itself. They're not going to catch, but they're kind of going to catch. Okay, let's just burnish that down just a tiny bit more and see if that helps. Just because the cartabella paper is heavy. I think they'll be fine. Okay, so we are on the home stretch here, I promise. All right, let's bring this back in. Now, we're going to get glue all over the back side of this and put it down. See what I'm doing here. Okay, there's the first side. We're gonna get our other side. Okay, I'm going to turn it this 
way. So I can see what I'm doing here, maybe. Actually, I think I'm going to do it upside down. Okay. I want to line this up top to bottom as close as you can get it to its other half on the other side there. And there you have it. There are your awesome flaps that give you somewhere to put pictures or journal or whatever, but also preserve the absolute adorable, I don't know, can dinosaurs be adorable? The very cool page. Okay. So that's going to close. All we need to do is mat this. This page in the original book didn't have anything else on it. So this is the one where I was trying to decide if I'm going to do... I think I like him. I'm putting him on the front. Okay. So I need to trim this down just a little bit. It needs to be five and three quarters wide. pages on there. I can't even tell you. Click on the image. Okay. Wait, what do we have later? I don't know. The days you're ordering Daddy's gonna what? I don't think they're open today. But he can try. Okay, so there you have it. We just need to mat in here. Um, you can mat on these big gussets if you want to. You don't have to. And there you go. And then we'll have that one on the front. Mat our side pieces here. And the book is done. I think I'm actually going to add a ribbon closure on this one this time just because it is a little bit stiffer using this binding method than my original one was not that there's anything wrong with that that's totally fine or yeah, i think i can play with it a little here get it to bend a little more yeah i think it's going to get a ribbon closure i just need to find some ribbon that goes with it um, so I will get this finished off and I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, we are done. I have just gone in on the front and popped up the, uh, matted and popped up the little dinosaur banner stickers for the front, uh, matted and popped those. Um, for the other two border strips I had, le had left, I ended up cutting those to mat oops, that got messed up um to mat the spine and then i carried it around to the back and then did the same thing on the other side and it really came out much cooler than i thought it would um added a ribbon closure cut just some basic inserts for that uh cut my did the rest of my cut apart inserts I think I'm missing one actually. I know I had one more left over here somewhere. And I don't know what happened to it. Okay. Um, just added a couple of photo mats in there. Cut my photo mats here. Added uh, a couple of tuck spots just to catch anything that's um, up underneath those belly bands. Finished matting through here. Uh, I did mat the back side of my waterfall with the um, matching solids and matted 
the uh, little flips on that page. So this is all ready to go. I will get the walkthrough up and the tutorial edited and posted as soon as I can. If you end up making this, please share this on my page, Scrapping Under the Influence, and also please share this on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. All of my supplies came from Country Craft Creations, uh, Navy Artisan Cardstock, the Dinosaur Collection, uh, seam binding, magnets, the whole bit. So uh, if you end up making this, I would love to see it. Thanks.